Today we are going to solve two problems from the book Power System Analysis by John J. Granger and William D. Stevenson. These are problems 1.4 and 1.5. So the problem states, uh, problem number 4, a single phase AC voltage of 240 volts is applied to a series circuit whose impedance is 10 Cs, 60 degrees. Find R, X, P, Q, and the power factor of the circuit. And then problem number 1.5. If a capacitor is connected in parallel with the circuit in problem 1.4, and if this capacitor supplies 1250 volt ampere reactive, find P and Q supplied by the 240 volt source and find the resultant power factor. So we solve problem 1.4 first. So the first quest, uh, question is find R, X, P, and Q. So we know that the impedance is given. The impedance is given as Z is equal to uh, 10 uh, C is 60 degrees. So, okay, so in order to find R, we can use the formula R is equal to 10 or let's say Z magnitude of Z Z cosine cosine theta or the phase angle so in this case Z magnitude is 10 and the phase angle is 60 degrees so therefore R will be equal to 10 cosine 60 degrees and then when we calculate R this will be equal to 10 times cosine 60 degrees so that will be 5 ohms 5 ohms Okay, and then to calculate X, which is the uh, reactance, X, X is equal to Z, and then sine, sine theta, and then X, X will be equal to 10 sine 60 degrees then that will be equal to 8.66 ohms so that will be equal to x equals 8.66 Ops. okay but there's a second method uh, to find resistance and reactance when we are given the impedance in polar form that is simply to convert the polar form of the impedance to its rectangular form and then the real part of that rectangular form of the impedance phasor will be our resistance and then the imaginary part will be our reactance so Simply put, we can say that Z uh, theta is equal to R plus J, Jx, where Z is the impedance, R is the resistance, and X is the reactance. So if we convert that impedance in polar form to its rectangular form, then 60 degrees will be equal to so let's convert it 10 60 so that will be the real part will be 5 and the imaginary part which is the y component equal to 8.66 so that is the same as using this formula okay so 5 plus j j 8.66 
Vamos. Okay. So as I've said, the real part will be our resistance. And then the imaginary part will be our reactance. Okay. So in order to find P and Q, since the circuit is in series, we're going to find the current first and then we're going to solve for P and Q in terms of current and resistance and reactance. So current I will be equal to voltage divided by the impedance. Okay. So I is equal to 240 divided by divided by uh, 10 which is the uh, value of the impedance right and then with the angle of 0 with the angle of 0 minus 60 degrees right so therefore our current will be 24 cs negative 60 degrees okay so now that we have the current we can now solve for the active power and reactive power so active power p is equal to i squared i squared r so which is equal to uh, 24 squared times resistance of 5 so therefore our p will be to be equal to 24 squared times 5 which is equal to 2880 watts okay so 2880 watts and now for the for the reactive power q q will be equal to i squared x which is equal to 24 squared times 8.66 our q will become q equals 24 squared times 8.66 which will be 4988.16 4988.16 both ampere reactive both ampere reactive okay so that will be the answer for p and q now we are also asked to find the power factor of the circuit so power factor of the circuit is simply the cosine of the phase angle or cosine 60 degrees the phase angle is 60 degrees power factor our factor is equal to cosine theta which is equal to cosine 60 degrees Now, power factor will become power factor will be 0 0.5 or because cosine 60 degrees is 0 0.5. Okay. Now, problem 1.5. If a capacitor is connected in parallel with the circuit in problem 1.4, and if this capacitor supplies 1,250 volt ampere reactive, find P and Q supplied by the 240 volt source and find the resultant power factor. So in this problem, P or active power will still be 2,880 because we did not uh, add any component that can affect the active power. Uh, therefore, P is equal to 2,880. 
880 watts. Okay, and then Q will be will be the difference between the original reactive power and the additional reactive power because we added capacitor bank so we need to subtract that 1250 volt ampere reactive from the the initial reactive power so our initial reactive power is from the problem above is 4988.16 4988.16 minus 1250 volt ampere active okay so therefore q will become 4988.16 minus 150 which is 3738.16 3738.16 volt ampere reactive okay and then we are also asked to find the resultant power factor so the resultant power factor will be the cosine of the new phase angle okay but in order to phase uh, to find the phase angle we need the arc tangent of reactive power over active power so let's say power factor final will be equal to cosine of arc tangent negative uh, uh, q divided by p okay so that will be our uh, new power factor so therefore power factor final will be equal to cosine of arc tangent arc tangent Uh, 3738 38.16 38 divided by 2880 alright so if we calculate that mm, cosine then arc tangent arc tangent 3738.16 divided by 2880 so that will be our resultant power factor 0 0.61 okay so power factor final will be 0 0.61 so that will be our final power factor 0 0.61 lagging okay so that's it for our video for today and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like and notification bell thank you very much and god bless